What's the new Devin Gardner? You watched him on tape. You've seen him the last couple of years. You don't know if he'll play for sure on Saturday, but who is he right now? I thought still he's an awfully good player. They've won a lot of games because of him. You know, uh, they've, um, you know, in our opinion, in, in evaluating the tape, is over the last two years, they've lost some awfully good offensive linemen. And uh, uh, they're not playing quite as well up front as they have in the past. Uh, you know, they got a true freshman, I mean, starting at the one tackle. And, and so, um, um, you know, like anything, I think the quarterback takes too much blame when you lose as well as they probably get too much credit when you win. Do you, do you prepare for two quarterbacks though? Well, it's just hard because he's on, I mean, throwing the ball 20 times, you know, and so you just uh, you go off their scheme in general and what they've done to try to attack you the last couple of years and and uh, they hired a new offensive coordinator and, you know, the changes that that, the, that he's made but not specific quarterback wise. I, we just don't have enough video to do that. Uh, you guys have 13 takeaways. Uh, how pleased are, we, are you with that, and, and do you think it's something that could be a season-long trend? Hope so, but you know, it's uh, uh, I, it always has been the case. You know, I mean, you you look at the the plus-minus ratio of turnovers has more to do with winning and losing a lot of times, and how many turnovers that that you actually create. You know, and so. I think that if you create turnovers the same time your offense has got to keep from turning the ball over to the bigger that differential is, you know, so, um, you know, we, we keep track of turnovers, obviously, and, and, uh, but it's, it's still a game of, of points of not letting people score. And, and so, uh, but we're very pleased with it so far where we're at. We, we've made some big plays in the games. How did you feel your, your secondary responded on Saturday? You had that one drive where it's you guys were maybe just a place going to beat a couple times, but from yeah. that point on, they're pretty solid. Yeah, that one drive is about three plays. Really, but you know, we got aggressive on a double move and got beat deep on a, on a double move. And, uh, and then um, on the one blitz, uh, they, they broke the screen on us. So uh, besides that, I, I was very pleased with the way we played and, and in the plays we made. Uh, we got to play better on third down. I think we could have got off the field a few times a little bit sooner. So it wasn't one of our better games on third down, but but overall the end result, uh, our kids made some plays they needed to. In your mind, uh, third down percentage, where would you want to do I think everybody will tell you, you try to win at least two out of every three. So basically 70%, you want to be successful on 70%. If you can do that, you, usually games go pretty good for you. Yeah, I didn't look at where it's at right now. I just look at game by game. I know we didn't get it this last game. You know, um, and we've gotten it, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you know, we, we, I mean, right or wrong, we look at stats two different ways, you know, is it the the score that at the end of the game and who's in, you, you know, and so uh, we feel like of that, you know, is, is that uh, half the games we've gotten where we wanted to be on third down, the other two, or really three of the four we have. You have TCU, they were two of 14 or something like that on third down. It was some other big plays we needed to stop there, but it wasn't our third down defense that stopped us from, from winning there. So three out of the four, I think we've played well on third down. This was the first one. But then again, you go back a year ago, we played terrible on third down versus Michigan, especially in the second half. We, we, we couldn't get them off the field. And so uh, we've got to play much better on third down this year against them. You had said before that you felt that because partly because of all the freshmen you've had to play, that you, this, you've been making more adjustments than you thought you might yeah. have had to do. How are you feeling at this point going into Big Ten play? Actually, really good uh, because the D line kids up front, the young kids have have gotten better each week, and uh, uh, we've even been able to move them around more than I thought we could. And, and so uh, um, we, we've probably played more nickel so far this year than than what we ever have with an extra DB. But that's because of the offenses that we're seeing. We're seeing hardly any two backs at all. Everything's one back. So, uh, uh, but. Uh, I think we continue to uh, get better, and, and we're looking forward to, to getting the Big Ten started. How about Utah? You learn a lot from watching them back then, so? You know, th there's just enough differences in there, you know, but I, I think the things that any time we watch tape, and, and most coaches do, they said they watch how people get pressure on other teams, you know, if there's anything that fits in there, but uh, at the same time, you can't change your whole defense each week, and so you try to find there's one or two things they did that you think you can get taught in a week and it fits into what you're doing. You know, but uh, Utah did a good job keeping the ball in front of them for the most part and uh, did a great job of, of getting pressure on him. How good a runner is Gardner? 
he's good. I mean, we couldn't tackle him a year ago. Kept getting away from us, and so um, hopefully we'll do a better job of, of keeping him in the pocket and and uh, um, a little better job of, of uh, coverage on on third down. Seems like you guys have done a good job so far against explosive plays. How do you feel about it? You know, I, I think we can play better because our goal is one or less a game. You know, I, you try to hold them one big play or less, and, and we haven't been able to do that yet. That's the one goal I don't think we've gotten all year as far as defense goes. So we, we have to continue to, to keep the ball in, in front of us a little bit. I think we, we can uh, still eliminate some big plays. They look better running the ball. I mean, Derek Green's lost some weight. It seems like he's moving around a little better. Yeah, I think that um, um, you know, they lost um, – uh, like I say, with the kids they lost a year ago, I think that fits into them a little bit better to try to, to run the ball a little bit more, you know. And uh, uh, but then, like I say, to, I mean, the problems, uh, in, in my opinion, watch them is when they've gotten the obvious throwing situations is uh, some protection issues more so than, than the quarterback. When you look at their turnover, they had 12 turnovers and been mostly a result of pressure. Yeah, them. yeah, yep. I think that's fair to say. Yep. Yes. What did you learn from uh, the game last year? I know the score wasn't indicative of the way it went, but you know you guys made a run after the bye week after that. Yeah, yeah. The last two years we played them. We played them here uh, two years ago. There's about five plays that you take away, and we're in it to the end. And last year there's about seven of them. You know that you take away, and but six of those seven were in the second half. You know, so we just did not compete. Uh, as well and make some plays in the second half. Um, but we felt like that game should have been seven to seven at half or down ten to seven. We ended up being down fourteen to seven at the half. So uh you know, you feel like you can compete with them but at the same time it's just like um if, if you don't make the plays you need to make on third down and it comes to the Big Ten season and keep the ball in front of you, you know, everybody's capable of scoring a lot of points and they still are. I mean they, they have some very good offensive players. They really do, skill wise and uh um, hopefully, you know our guys up front can control the game. Are they as good? As, one more question for Coach Clay. Are they as good or better than last year? I, th I think skill-wise and, and running back-wise, and all of that is at least as good as it was a year ago. You know, I say having to start a true freshman, in the offensive line, another kid who I think is maybe a redshirt freshman. They're just awfully young up front, and I, I don't think that's happened very often at Michigan. They usually just have linemen where it's always upperclassmen. So it, I think the experience in the offensive line right now is what's given them a little bit of trouble. But skill-wise, they're, they're as good as they've been in the past. Okay. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. Matt, how do you think the offensive line kind of responded from the TCU game to uh, last week? <clears throat> you know, I was overall, I was generally pleased, but uh, still a ton of work to do. That's actually the very first thing I told them when we met on Sunday to go over film. You know, I said I, I felt like they... They answered the call, but there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. So uh, we have a huge challenge this week. Uh, Michigan's playing very well on defense, and uh, especially up front. Their front seven are uh, pretty darn good. So, uh, you know, it doesn't get any easier from here, and that's uh, basically what we, my message was on Sunday. Did you encourage your quarterback through more passes, or did you gain a lot of confidence by running the way you did? You know, we won the football game, and, and uh, you know, the big thing I tried to get across uh, to whoever uh, asked was, you know, Chris did a great job of uh, running the offense and, and doing the things that he needed to and really taking what they gave us. And, and the reads he made in, the, in the, the, the run game with the zone reads were, uh, it's as good as I've seen, you know, of, of a group that we've coached as far as the decision-making he made. There may have been one, maybe two times we saw, oh, he should have, kept that one or he should have should have you know should have pulled that one or given that one and that's that's a hard thing especially for a new starter um as far as throwing the ball more um i think if put in a situation where we felt like we had to uh we would do it more but i uh, felt like we were in a groove and going so Are your offensive line healthy or not we're getting there um you know we're still trying to work some things out uh with with that group of guys but uh you know, this time of year, they're never going to be 100% healthy. You just try and get them as, uh, feeling as good as they can come Saturday. But uh, they're nicked up, but uh, I think probably ask any O-line coach in the country, they're basically going to tell you the same thing this time of the year. First leg and uh, the kid from Wazetta, how are they? You know what? Um, they, they both played well. Um, I, I wanted to get Jonah a little bit more work than I did, the way the rotation worked out. 
sometimes when you're rotating guys through, uh, a guy will get a series and it'll be a 10-11 play series, and then unfortunately the next guy gets in there, maybe it's a three play series. So uh, Jonah didn't get quite as many reps as I had hoped uh, uh, to get him in that ball game, but when he was in there, he did a nice job, and, and Ben's really coming on since he had his ankle injury in camp. How does your offense change with, with Max not in the mix? You know, it does, it does change things. Um, you know, that, that, is, uh, that is something that, uh, that, you know, you have to account for. Um, you know, uh, Brandon Lingen does a great job uh, getting in there and doing a lot of the things we ask, uh, ask Max to do. But uh, uh, Brandon's not Max right now, and he'll get there eventually. But uh, so you do lose out, and you do have to find other ways to, to compensate for that in all the things that Max does for our offense. Matt, are you, are you saying with... Uh with Chris, with Strebler, that, that his reads were as good as, as any quarterback, you, even going back to like when you were at Northern? Yeah, yeah, he did a, he did a great job. I mean, and, and the thing was, was it wasn't easy either. They were, uh, they were, they were giving us a lot of different looks. They were, they were kind of trying to figure out how to, how to solve, that, solve that riddle. And uh, uh, he did a fantastic job. Everything they threw at him um, just, just handled it, handled it like a vet, which was great to see. Practice. Uh, how is Chris throwing the ball? Because we haven't seen him, you know, since fall camp. And mm -hmm. He was struggling a little bit, you know. But has he made improvements since fall camp? Just throwing the ball. Yeah. You know what? I. You know, the biggest thing is, is if you look at uh, a couple of the things he did on Saturday. I mean, he put a great ball on KJ. Uh, you know, you really couldn't ask for a better placement of that ball. And and uh, you know, uh, uh, the 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 second ball to KJ on the. Uh, third down where he tried to hit him over the middle you know he led him just a little bit but it was it was something that was that was on the money safety made a nice break on it so um, you know there isn't a, a there isn't a concern with how he throws the football with the way we uh, you know with the w way the game went on Saturday and how it progressed it just was uh, it was a situation where you know we were going to force them to uh, make us or to stop the run game to put us in that situation and we really never felt like we were, you know, we were in that situation. Was it thought given when you're going into San Jose State that to put put him in, Chris, into situations where he was going to be exposed to things that might knock his confidence, given that you may need him uh, to start again one week later at Michigan? Well, yeah, you don't, you know, you, you know, there, there's some things you don't necessarily want to be completely trial by fire. You know, you, you, you know what you try and do is in practice, you try and put guys in deficit situations, try and make things tougher. Uh, you know, maybe blitz in a situation where a team doesn't generally show blitz or what have you, just so there's the, the unknown. But when you get to the ball game, you, you want it as being as smooth sailing as possible. So uh, you try and eliminate as you go along in the week some things that maybe like today. There's a couple things we think, boy, this will be great against Michigan. But then by the time we get to Thursday and, and finalize that game plan, maybe it's something that the quarterbacks don't feel comfortable with. Maybe it's something that, you know, we're not going to be able to handle up front protection-wise because of, of some things they do, and that gets pulled away. And, and that's really what we did with regards to as the week went on, knowing Chris was going to be the starter. You know, when I talk about it every week, we, we had our game plan that, that we had that we felt good about, about beating San Jose State with. And... Uh, the majority of that game plan, Chris was going to be able to, uh, you know, execute and felt good about. So, you know, that's that's how we try and approach every week. Okay, but that quarterback's ability to run and cop in there, that gives you something that's uh, almost as effective as a passing attack. I like your thinking, Sid. Um, <laughs> you're exactly right. And, and the nice thing about what, what Chris gives you is, is that, that it gives you some additional outside types of runs, some things that break – uh, the tackle box, and, and that's something that uh, uh, one of the things San Jose State was going to do is they were going to put eight and sometimes nine guys up around the football. And when they do that, you know, the, there's, there's a couple ways to attack it. You can throw the football because it's one-on-one -on, -one on the perimeter, but there's also not many guys left on the perimeter. So if you can find ways to get that ball out there, um, that's another reason why maybe uh, against some teams a five- or six-yard gain that Chris might have had turned into an 18- or 20-yard gain against those guys because there just wasn't anybody left out there. So, uh, you know, that's where we look at and go bigger picture. Yeah, we, you know, I knew coming in here everybody said, hey, you know, I don't even know how many passes we threw. You know, we completed one. I get that. But Chris did a great job in what we asked him to do on Saturday. And I, and I feel like if we had to throw it 20 times, he's going to do a pretty good job in that. So.
Yeah, uh, kind of, this is the last question. Go ahead, Michael. To kind of build off of that, if you run it exactly the way you ran it last week and throw it exactly the way you did last week, can you win in the Big Ten? Probably not. We, we've got it. We've got to get better. I mean, when we do throw the football, we've got to get better. Now, I'm not going to say we need to throw it more, but when we do, I mean, we need to make sure that it's it's spot on. And so, it's it's a constant thing that we're working on. Like I said, you know, what happens is 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 there is a little bit of an adjustment, a little bit of shifting as far as the the priorities in the past game. Because no matter how much we try, and I you know I say, hey, you know, we we put together a game plan. There are some strengths that each quarterback's going to have, and so uh, you know we'll pattern uh, the game plan a little bit to those strengths as well. And uh, you know that doesn't mean that Chris is going to be the guy that's going to be the starter and play, or, or or Mitch or what have you. But it's always nice to have some of those things where you go, okay, this is this is the go-to stuff, and this is the stuff we feel good about. So if it's if it's six times, if it's twelve times, if it's twenty-two, if it's twenty-nine. You know, we need to have a good percentage. We need to make sure that we're converting, and, th and that's always a priority. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. We'll have, uh, yeah. Hey, John at Minnesota, we're all done.